Hello everyone, my name is Thor B. Jørgensen. This is the second time I shall celebrate Easter as Bishop of the Lutheran Church in Great Britain. It is the second Easter I also have been forced to stay back in my home in Norway. I left the UK 8th of March last year and four days later the lockdown became a new reality and I have not been able to return to my diocese after that. We have come to Monday, Thursday and the Holy Week. In Norway it is a public holiday, as is also Good Friday and the second day of Easter. To many Norwegians these days means holidays in the mountains, connected with three words starting with the letter S, snow, sun and skiing. The Christian content of the holidays is generally acknowledged, but rather blurred to many. Church attending is not the biggest. It is a good question for a quiz master. Why do we celebrate Monday, Thursday? Or what happened on Monday, Thursday? Or why do we actually call the day Monday, Thursday? Or Shär Torsta, as we say in Norwegian. What happened on Monday, Thursday may be a mystery to many, not only in a theological sense, but in the basic remembering of what actually happened on that day. Being reminded of it, people will mostly recognize this as the day of the Last Supper for Jesus and his friends, or as the First Eucharist. In Norwegian, we call this day, as mentioned, a and that point in another direction, doesn't it? The immediate meaning of Shad is not a common word in Norwegian. Googling the word in English, I understand that there also is an old English equivalent. Share Thursday. Share or Shad meaning the same. Clean. That point to this day as a day for washing and making clean. The immediate reference of cleansing will, for anyone familiar with Jesus' story, be baptism, or for some also connected with wheat washing. And here in the Holy Week, it is definitely a reference to the last image, the image of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. That was an extraordinary act, not connected with the Jews' Passover meal. The washing of the feet were common when people entered the house, not during the meal. Therefore, this was not only uncommon what Jesus did, it was a direct provocation. How could he the Master and Lord do this humiliating act. And Peter protested, You will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, underlining the importance of the act, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Afterwards, Peter and the others understood that Jesus was alluding to his soon-to-come suffering and sacrifice, his giving of himself to be crucified. That happened on the next day, Good Friday, as you say in English. We call it the Long Friday in Norwegian. The washing of the feet has been a ceremony on Monday, Thursday, since very early in the history of the Church. A bishop elected twelve priests, whose feet should be washed by him, as a sign that the leaders in the church are the servant of the servants. Pope Francis expanded this concept in his early days as Pope in 2013. He washed the feet of juvenile prisoners, both women and Muslims. Three years later he washed the feet of migrants seeking refugee, refuge in Europe. 
To me, Pope Francis' daring actions stand out as a sort of holy moment. Personally, I experienced such a moment when I, in 1998, visited Madagascar as a then General Secretary of the Norwegian Missionary Society. When I re arrived in one of the revival centers called the Tobi in Malagasy, located at Ankara Malaza in the southeast coast of the beautiful island, the shepherds there, all dressed in white, showed me a kind of bathroom and washed my feet. I was unprepared. It was awesome in one way. One of the strongest experiences in my whole life, both physically and emotionally. A moment of inclusion, a moment recognizing the serving fellowship we have in Jesus Christ. Now we can ask, what is the meaning of the word modi? Maybe many of you will know. I had to Google the English word and learned that many will associate it with a special gift, as in royal Monty. But the word is based upon the Latin expression mandatum, meaning a commandment with direct connection with the story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. Because Jesus also gives give his disciples a new commandment. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Jesus created a new fellowship of love with no borders, with no limitations. As Paul explains to the Galatians, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is never, neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Jesus Christ. A radical message of equality, sharing and serving which has made an immense impact on the history of the human life and society. Feet washing is a beautiful sign of that new fellowship. This year as last year, I don't think there will be many feet washing ceremonies around in the churches. The pandemic has made congregating difficult, particularly physical closeness. Even celebrating the Holy Communion so closely connected with Monday, Thursday is for many not possible. The sharing of the cup is also part of the history of cleansing and, as it is, of the new fellowship. To remind us of that, I have behind me here a Japanese cup used for the Eucharist in an wooden image I received from friends while in Japan, the cup of blessing. This is the blood of Christ shared for you. And his service for us will be with us whether we are able to come physically together around a table or not. His love is always there and our love can be extended to each other and to a world in need around us, also whilst we still must keep the rules of social distancing and not being able to celebrate the rich mystery of Monday Thursday together. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.